Hello friends and welcome to an amazing project that we're going to be working on today. It's a steampunk art box project that features some really cool materials. So as we unpack your kit today, you're going to find that we have a white piece of paper that you can put down on any surface you're working on to protect it from some of this really sticky glue that we're going to be using. You'll find some vintage papers from a book, some ticket stubs. Inside you'll also find some different cogs and gears, your glue and your glue brush, and your art box. The only thing that you need to bring along to create today are some scissors and a pencil. All right, so go ahead and get your area set up. You can pause this video and when you're set up, go ahead and unpause it and we'll get ready to create. The first thing that we're going to do with our project is we're going to work on covering the background of our mixed media piece. So I've included this really great vintage paper. Um, some of the papers that I have today are from the old Grimm's fairy tale and from Black Beauty. They came from a book that I found that was from, I believe, 1938 from Black Beauty. And Grimm's Fairy Tale was a print that I found from 1918 from an old children's school book. So I used paper that's been around for a really long time so that when I use it, it's almost gonna act a little bit like a tissue paper and be really flexible to work with. So any type of old thin paper that you have is gonna work great. And I love things with that old type font. It even has a little bit of writing on it where somebody took some notes from some pages that they were doing and some really old um, page design print, which I absolutely love. So I'm gonna work on covering the inside of my box first. So I've got a couple different options when I approach this project. I can rip some pieces of paper to lay them down and almost do like a decoupage, or I can keep the print intact and lay it down almost like a flat tile on the inside, which is what I'm going to do. So I'm gonna choose which print I like the best out of the sheets that I have, and I've included two sheets in your kit so I really like kind of this darker Grimm's fairy tale. I like how it goes with a little bit of that feeling of the steampunk um, kind of mood that we have. So I'm just gonna take the paper and lay it right over the top of my art box. And I'm gonna give it a little press over the top and fold down the edges so I can see where the corner of my box is. And then I'm gonna use my scissors to trim around all of those different corners. So it's gonna be just a little bit bigger than the inside of the box. And it doesn't have to be perfect. I'm gonna save any scrap pieces of paper that I have so I can use those later. So I've got a piece of paper that's just a little bit bigger than the outside of my tray. And then I liked the title that I have at the top of the page, so I decided to leave that as well. So I'm gonna take this beautiful print, and before I glue anything down, I'm gonna take that print, I'm gonna press it into my box. So that everything fits nice and tight on the inside. <clears throat> Creating a nice frame on the inside of my box. <clears throat> I'm not worried about any of the extra paper because I'm going to glue all of that down. So I'm just seeing how my paper fits. So the great thing about having two pieces of paper is if you messed up on one of the papers and it tore a little bit and you want to try again, you can do that as well. So again, I took the paper, put it over the top, cut it just a little bit bigger than the box, 
I love these wards of Grimm's Fairy Tale. I'm just pressing it in to get a good fit. And now that I see how everything fits down together really nice, I'm gonna take the paper out, I'm gonna open up my glue, and I'm gonna put a nice coat of glue all along the bottom of my box. <clears throat> So I want to put a pretty thick layer of glue because I don't want it to dry before I get a chance to put that paper down in there. And then I'm just going to try to smooth out any large clumps of glue that I have. I'm going to rest my brush on the lid. Then I'm going to take my paper and press it down on the inside. all the way into those corners. Now if you're having a hard time getting into the corners, you can always take the extra glue off your brush and use the very back end of your brush to help you push down those corners. Just be really careful that that paper doesn't rip, just pushing really gently to help you get those corners down in there. Next, to keep these pieces of paper from flapping up, I'm gonna go ahead and go straight into the glue. I'm gonna go right underneath that paper and brush a little bit over the top of the paper and I'm gonna press that paper down right onto the wood. So a little bit of glue under the paper and right on top of the paper to help it stick. So right now I'm just going along the edges of the paper. I haven't done anything on the inside yet. I'm gonna wait until I finish my project and then I'm gonna put a layer of glue over everything to hold it down. And then it'll seal everything in. I'm just coming right in here, adding that glue a little bit under the paper where I can get it and then right over the top. In doing this kind of mixed art media, there's a whole bunch of different glues that you can use. I don't recommend using Elmer's glue. It's got a lot of water in it, so it'll wrinkle your paper. It also sometimes peels the ink off of the paper and leaves you with a mess. Um, they do make something called gel medium. It's a little bit more expensive and a little bit harder to get, but you can find that at all different types of craft stores. What we're using today is Mod Podge. It's a matte Mod Podge, so it dries um, with a matte finish, which means it's not shiny or glossy. It's a little bit more affordable. What's really great about Mod Podge is they started selling it in some of the um, Dollar Tree stores and 99 cent stores, so you can get a couple ounces for $1.25, which is pretty good. So it's pretty affordable, pretty easy to find. And the 99 cent stores, Dollar Tree stores, they also sell brushes that are disposable, that are really great for using for painting and for applying glue because you can just throw the brush away instead of having to spend money on really expensive supplies really great for crafting. All right, so I'm just gonna go back, see if I left any paper that's kind of away from the sides and get down as much as I can. All right, great job. 
I was looking at my Grimm's fairy tale and it says Snow White. So I think I've got the story about the original Snow White, which is a little gruesome. So very interesting story of Snow White if you ever get the chance to read it. All right, fantastic job. All right, so we've got the inside covered. So we've got some of the side walls on the inside and the outside of our walls to do. So there's a couple different options that we can take when we cover the rest of this uh, mixed media box. I can take some of the extra strips of paper that I have and I can go wrap them either on the outside and then wrap them over to the front and bring them, wrap them into the inside of the box so that the outside of my box is covered and the inside of my box is covered. So this way I have the same type of paper wrapping all of my art media box. <clears throat> so I'll just take this scrap or I can cut up the extra piece of paper that I have. So I'll just cut it into strips, wrap it around and wrap it on the inside. I'll take the glue and put the glue down, put the paper and then I'll wrap it. Another option that you have are we have these really cool ticket stubs. Um, they're all, for all different things. Um, something traveling, some have railroads on them, um, some are important document papers, some are traveling. Super cute, super cool. Um, I have one that is already cut to size here, but you can take one and trim it on the outside. So right along this line, and this line right here, you can trim it up with scissors and along the bottom and the top line, and it will fit right along the outside of your box. So if you'd like to cover the outside of your box with all of the ticket stubs, you can do that also. So there's a couple different ways that you can cover the outside of your box. And then to finish off the inside of your box, you can cut the strips of paper Put the paper on the inside, wrap it around to the outside. I think we would need a bigger piece. So I would wrap this around to the outside. I would wrap with paper first and then finish it off with an old ticket stub. So the paper would be entirely on the inside of the box and the paper stub would be on the outside of the box. So I'll explain both ways one more time. The first way that you can finish your box is to do an all paper box with a vintage reading book paper. You would cut off a piece that would match the outside. You would glue it on from the outside first and then wrap it around to the inside and then you would be completely covered in the vintage book paper. The second option that looks really good as well is you would start from the inside, glue it down, wrap it around to the outside and then finish it off with an old vintage ticket. So either way you choose is gonna look absolutely amazing. So I'm gonna go ahead and do the old vintage ticket on the outside. So you can pause this video or you can continue watching along while I finish wrapping the outside and then we'll catch up when we get ready to put our tickets on and our steampunk gears. So I'll see you in just a second and I cannot wait for you to finish this step. It's going to be so cool.
So we have our boxes covered. I've got the inside covered and the outside covered. So now what I'm gonna do is I'm gonna to start to work on the inside of my box. So I've got a few ticket stubs that I've included. And then I've got some different gears that um, I've created with this kind of fun steampunk look. So with the steampunk, we can layer the different gears inside of the box, which are really fun. So I wanna give you a few ideas before you start designing your box. With the tickets, what we can do are a couple different things. We can add tickets to the top of the box up in the corner and one on the other side. So as you'll see, what I didn't worry so much about um, the corner spaces too much because I knew that I was gonna incorporate some tickets into my design. So I don't wanna just focus on the inside of my box, but in order to give this really cool mixed media feel, I wanna be able to add space to all of the dimensions of my box. So with some of the gears, I'll probably add a ticket and then I might add a gear coming off the side of the box or coming up on the inside of the box. Let me tilt this just a little bit so we can kind of see what's going on inside the box just a little bit better because I know that flat view is a little bit hard to see. So I'll add a ticket to the outside of the box and then I'll build up some gears on the inside of the box so when it's sitting on my desk I've got something visual that I can look at. So I love to work in groups of threes visually because I like the look of that effect. So when I put my gears in I'm going to design not just on the inside of my box but I'm going to think about the outside as well and I'm going to think about things moving 3D dimensionally outside of my box as well. Let me see, I might do a large, a medium, and a small gear all working together at the back side of my box with a ticket up in the corner. I might take my timepiece and add that to the front of my box 
So as I'm sitting at my desk, um, for me, I'm a post-it note fanatic. I love post-it notes and I stick them everywhere, all over my computer, all over my desk. I would probably stick them on my dog if he wouldn't eat them, um, but he would. But I love post-it notes, so that's what I'm going to use this tray for. So I'm going to put my little clock gear on the front of my post-it note to remind me to get things done on time um, because I do have a hard time sometimes getting things done on time. Probably should admit that, but that's okay. And then I'm going to add some different gears. And what's really fun, let me see if I can not drop all these, is with the gears, I'm going to think about maybe layering a few on top of each other. I can also take any of the words that really stand out to me and any of the blank part of the papers that I have. Here's one, do your best. So I would cut that out. Let me see, this is not gonna stay, so I'm gonna let this collapse a little bit. I would just take a blank piece of paper. I would find these words that are left And just out of what I have, I would put a little reminder on my steampunk box on a little piece of paper. Do your best. And I would make my own little motivational quote out of what I found. So now is the fun part. You get to be the creator designer, creative designer of your steampunk box. Um, here's little hands that go with the clock or you can put these little time clock hands inside one of the gears. You're hanging it on the wall. You want to think about the gears being visible where you can hang it flat and be able to see the different gears when it hangs up on a wall. All right, so have fun, be creative, and then once everything is put together, I'm gonna to show you how to finish off this piece. Everywhere the paper touches the tray, I'm gonna make sure I put some glue down because I want that to last and I want it to stay. I'm gonna put a good amount of glue on the back of my pieces so that they stay in place.
I finished putting all of the elements on my tray. I've got some of those really cool stickers and all of the different gears that are on it. So I put a good healthy amount of that Mod Podge to keep the gears in place. And once it dries, those are really gonna stick well. I found a couple of quotes that I really liked on that paper, do your best, um, which was a gem of a find in that paper. And then I also really liked the title, Grimm's Fairy Tale. And then on that second piece I had was the title, Black Beauty. Um, so I thought that was a great find from that vintage paper. If I had a second sheet of Grimm's Fairy Tales, I probably would have done three pieces Grimm's Fairy Tales just to really emphasize the title of that book because um, I really like how those um, italicized fonts really show up against the backdrop of um, the type font in the back. Um, I could have put my tickets down low, but I kind of like how they raise up above um, the tray. And then because this is gonna sit on my desk, I put a lot of pieces that I can look at both flat, um, vertical and horizontal. And then I move them along the piece so that my eye catches them going forward to backwards. So I think it was a success. I'm super happy with how this turned out. So now I wanna finish this. So once all of these gears have dried, and everything is set in place. I'm gonna come back to this glue that I have. And for the most part, my gears are set. They would move if I touch them because I do have a little bit of wet glue. But the last finishing touch that I wanna do is I just wanna go over everything with one coat of the Mod Podge, just a nice clear coat. That's gonna seal everything in. And then if I accidentally spill something on it, it's going to make it so that I can kind of wipe the surface. So if I have any edges that are sticking up, I can press those down and really finish off this piece nice. So I'm going to go ahead and put that single coat over it just to seal everything together and make sure that this piece lasts over time. Didn't, no pun intended. That was, that's a good one, Lisa. Well, thank you, thank you very much. So I'm just gonna go ahead and finish this off. I'm not gonna go over the gears necessarily if I don't need to. Those are gonna stay in place, but if I wanted to, I could put a little layer over the gears. But mostly I'm looking to hold down the corners and edges of the paper. So just kind of carefully working around the piece. making sure the corners are sealed really good. And I'll set the piece down and I'll start working on the edges on the top. I can go over the tickets if I'd like to just to kind of protect those. Then I'll work on the inside of my book pages. So wherever those book pages are on the inside, I'm gonna do those edges of the tray.
just give them one more coat. And then the great thing about this is anywhere that there's a little bit of raised glue, it's gonna dry nice and clear. And then finally, I'm gonna add just one coat on the inside because I haven't done anything yet to protect the paper on the inside. Right, so I'm gonna let that dry and then we'll take a look at that when that's all dry. Congratulations on your mixed media piece. I hope that you enjoyed making this as much as I enjoyed making it with you. So whether you're gonna hang this on your wall or put it on your desk at home, it's gonna make an amazing showpiece. So I'm gonna use this on my desk and I'm gonna use it to pop those post-it notes in there to help me remember all of those important things. So we'll see you next time when we create something amazing together.